When it comes to maintaining your bike, there is a world of products out there that say they do many different things. So here is our guide to lubing and greasing your bike. Behind me, I have five products which should keep your bike running completely smooth. First one we're gonna start with is PTFE spray. This can be used to disperse water from your bike after a wash, for example. It's great for use on the chain, although you do want to be really careful that you do not get it on your discs, because you'll only have to replace those pads or spend time trying to get the lubricant off them. So lubing the chain, I'm gonna do it below the chain stay here, trying to get it as close as I can without the crank bashing into my hand, something like that. You'll see that the overspray from the GT85 is going down and away from the bike, nowhere near the disc rotors. Once you've covered the whole chain, just get a rag and wipe any of the excess off. This will also bring some of the dirt and debris that you may have picked up on the trail off your chain, keeping it nice and clean. Other places I would use a PTFE spray are on linkage and general moving parts. This will drive out any water and hopefully keep the bike running nice and smooth. You can also use it to pre-lube inner cables. This will help ease the amount of friction that you have on your shifting and hopefully prolong the life of your gear cable. One of my pet hates is rusty bolt holes. I can't stand it. So I'll also use a little bit of that in there and hopefully keep your bike looking nice and new. So now for chain lube, you've dispersed the water with your PTFE spray. You should consider using either a dry lube like this one. This will be a lighter type of lube that perhaps won't attract the dirt and grime so much in dry conditions. If you ride in wet conditions regularly, you might need a more durable lube like this one that is a bit more susceptible to wear and tear of winter riding. Same again, just put the bottle under the chain, stay there, and simply pedal the bike backwards, getting the lube onto the chain. And once you're done, you simply wipe the excess off. You want to keep moisture out of most of the parts of your bike. And one of the best ways of doing that is using a multi-purpose grease like this. They're amazing for putting in the seats of bearings, either in your hubs or in the linkage of your rear suspension. Bit of grease in there, it'll stop the bearing corroding and hopefully allow you to replace them nice and easily. Also, any sort of bolts on the bike that you need to get in and out regularly that can be sort of driven water and moisture into, um, feel free to grease the whole thread of the bolt and put it back in. So when applying grease to a bolt, simply all you need to do is, I'll hold the bolt with the Allen key here, get a little bit of grease and just put it along the threads of the bolt. Give it a little rub with your finger and that should be enough to stop the bolt from seizing into the staff angled nut. Greasing your front axle or rear axle, if you have one, will make your life a lot easier. Simply, axles come out nice and easy and they slide back in nice and easy. So, same applies to the bolt, a little bit on the thread there and then a small amount over the axle itself. Just sort of give that little bit of a rub over the axle so you have a thin covering and you're ready to put it back in. It doesn't need to be loads because you don't want big amounts of grease pushing out of the side of the fork here or out of the hub. Grease is used quite widely over the bike. I would also use it on the threads of the pedal axles going into the cranks. The seat post if I'm using an alloy frame and also headset and linkages as previously mentioned. Next up, we have Loctite. This does the complete opposite to the grease and the PTFE spray, but there are a couple of places that is essential to use. If you have a conventional six bolt disc arrangement, 
um, it's quite handy to make sure that those disc bolts never come undone. Also, pins on your pedals, whether you ride clips or flats, you don't want those pins falling out. And lastly, but by no means least, if you have an ISCG mount like this one, these bolts here, you need to make sure that they stay really strong. Exactly the same principle as you apply grease to a bolt, just a little bit of Loctite. I'm using blue Loctite, which is the medium strength one, so you should be able to get it undone with relative ease. One pro tip for using Loctite is apply it to the spoke nipples. Goes without saying, it's only worth applying it to a straight wheel. But just a little drop here on the top of each nipple. So now I've applied the Loctite to every single nipple around the wheel. I'm gonna spin the wheel and that'll pull the Loctite into the threads of the spoke nipple and hopefully hold your wheel nice and true and stop your spoke nipples coming undone. One lube that I do like to use is Carbon Compound. You should consider using this when you have alloy going into carbon, carbon to alloy, or carbon, carbon. It will allow it to grip and hold there nice and firm instead of using grease conventionally with alloys. You need the smallest amount and just a little bit there on the seat post to not only hold it in place but also stop it from seizing. It can also be useful to use a little bit of carbon compound on a carbon railed saddle. This will stop it from slipping forwards or back within the clamping system of your seat post. Also, as I mentioned, carbon bars on an alloy stem or carbon bars carbon stem. So that's it for how to apply grease and lube to your bike. For more videos here on GMBN you can click up here and that'll get you through to our maintenance playlist and if you want to see what the pros do to their bikes and some of their hacks and I wouldn't say bodges but their fancy little bits that they do if you click down here that'll get you through to that video and it goes without saying click on all my lubes and greases to subscribe to GMBN. They say you'll never miss a video and it's bloody true.